Hi Floss Tube. my name's Dana and I am Gemstone Stitches here on YouTube and Instagram. I'm coming to you from gloomy Vermont. Uh, it was pretty sunny earlier in the week, but we did wake up to rain today. We've been enjoying the time change in the sense that it's staying lighter longer but the mornings are still a little tough because it's so dark and it's making it harder for all of us to wake up and today was particularly hard because of it being rainy day but i am so looking forward to spring we have some blooms coming in uh my tulips and daffodils are not blooms i guess we're not there yet but we have some sprouting um daffodils and tulips so blooms to come hopefully if the bunnies don't get to them and chomp them first i hope everybody's doing well thank you so much for pressing play on my video i know there's so many floss tubers out there to watch so i really appreciate you guys watching my video and i'm thrilled to get to share what i've been working on please like and subscribe if you choose to to do so. <laughs> I always feel weird saying that, but um, yeah, like and subscribe if you enjoy what you see. The last time I was here, I talked about uh, American Flag Quilt Sampler by Rosewood Manor, and I had started that project, but I still had a couple days to stitch on it. This is what it looks like. So, I started up here in this corner with this quilt block and there's a quilt block to represent each state in the United States. The first one is Delaware. I did go down a little bit more with the border and yeah, ended about there with that part of the border. So that's how much I got done on that part. And that's all of the border. There's, I believe that's all that's in there. There might be a bead or something if I'm recalling correctly. But as far as stitching, that's all that is entailed with that. This block had a lot to do. Um, First of all, between each block, there is a lot of stitching of this blue color. And then there's a lot of blue, blue, and red, gold, different colors of back stitching. The other part of this project is that the way it's charted, it does leave some blank spaces. So there's not really quarter stitches, or there, there might have been some quarter stitches charted, but in order to fill up the blank space, it said to do as you want to, leave it the way it is, or do as you want to to fill up that blank space. So I did go ahead and anywhere there was a little bit too much blank space, like at these red points, or maybe even in the gold or the blue, I did go ahead and add some stitching because I do like it to be to have good coverage. And then the state is just back stitched. It does call for two strands, but I might change. I might pull it out and go to one because it looks a little puffy and bulky. And this is one strand in the border. I like that a lot better. I really enjoyed working on this and I don't think it's slated to come back out again till maybe like the 4th of July for more patriotic times of the year. And then after that, I worked on Celtic Winter. This is what it looks like charted as is. I am doing the Miss Oh So Crafty conversion to blues and silvers and I'm adding the cloak onto the top of the dress 
you can find that conversion easily on the uh, Celtic Lady or Lavender and Lace Celtic Lady Conversion Facebook page. They have a file section and you can look it up there. Um, this is where I got to. I did work on this for two rotations. The first one, I, I started in the center and then I wanted to put a lot of the blues in, all the blues in just to see what they would look like. Closer up, you can see there's a couple more blues here. And there's one, about four lighter color blues and then a couple darker ones. I wanted to see what that would look like. And then the next time I pulled it out, the top of the cloak here met right with the, the neckline. So I decided I wanted to do the face. Um, I do stitch one or two strands over one tent stitch for the skin on my ladies. At, as of right now, I think I've done, this is the second skin on a lady that I've done. <laughs> and um, it's interesting, the choice of colors. I am doing the skin and the hair as charted. Um, you can kind of see this is the first color asked for and then there's a lighter color and that color is in the face as well and then the but it blends very well and then you get to that last color and I just went with it but I don't know I'm considering switching it to something that blends a lot better <laughs> to this color just because it does create such a stark contrast we'll see um i already spent a lot of time with the fabric and looking at the blues and the grays a whole ton before i finally chose um i think i'm basically following oh so crafty but I did change the blues slightly after doing a floss toss. And the other thing that I had to do before I got started was, so this is free. This is from Miss Oh So Crafty. It is a pattern for the cloak. So what I had to do is I basically had to put this together with the real pattern and kind of draw I, I did I drew on my pattern with pencil where the cloak goes so I know I don't need to stitch those areas from the pattern and where I'm not stitching I need to follow this pattern <clears throat> but I am making some changes I don't like the hair that comes down so I am going to go ahead and just continue the cloak in those areas I will have to um, do my own charting a little bit in there to make it flow because right now it kind of goes down and then stops and you can see the dark underneath the strands of hair so I'm gonna have to just make that flow better the other item that I need to decide on is you see in this original pattern there's a little wreath around her head and Right now, the way I've stitched is it's blank where that wreath is going. And I believe Miss Oso Crafty, she took the wreath completely out and just did the cloak and did some like whisper thread around the hood, which I think is cute. But I think I'm going to go ahead and do as charted with the wreath and then see about the cloak actually needing that whisper around the hood. So still more to figure out with this project, but thoroughly enjoying it. It's very 
fun stitch and I'm happy to start getting some progress on my Celtic ladies. I'm gonna have to look right there. It looks in the light you can kind of see. That's the thing about doing the one over one is that it doesn't still, it still doesn't come out as smooth as you think it's going to. Okay, next is Esther's Waves. I was excited to get to this one to do some beading. So the last time you saw it, well, this is what it looks like finished. Um, but the last time you saw it, I was partly through the big green band. So now I have finished that. My apologies, I have a thread here. So I finished the green, you can see sparkling. So it's all the way across. This is already finished, already finished, already finished. And I believe one of these was done. Yes, I think it was this orange one maybe that was done. Burnt orange. So what I did was I came up and decided to um, okay. decided to try out all the different colors of beads. So I first went in and started with the orange did a little bit there. Then I went in with the red and then got pretty far. Where did I? Oh, I did the whole top row. So the whole top row is done. I need to finish up this row and finish up this row. And then it'll be time to take this off the cue snap because I'll need to go from here down with beads. My plan is to move it onto the quantum frame and cover the beaded part with probably two layers of felt so that I don't disturb the beads at all. I do do a full cross with the beads so that it lays up and down, but also because it secures the bead down better as well. So hopefully all will be okay with rolling up the beads. I went through and found what other colors or what other bands are gonna require the Mill Hills, the, or the Magnifica Mill Hill beads. Um, so it's, it's this band that's covered up, which is this tan beige type color here. And then this burnt orange color is a Magnifica. So I counted how many I was gonna need based on how much I used for the green. Cause green is where I knew I was gonna run out. So if I needed more beads for these colors, then I knew I was gonna need another pack. And sure enough, I did. But I was very lucky and I found a store that had both colors so like when i went into google it just popped up and that store actually had both the colors i needed this is you can see it's discolored um plastic there but the beads are fine so this is the orange darker orange and this is the tan color so now i have all everything i need to go ahead and finish that project it's gonna it's supposed to be finished this year hope i can accomplish that the next project that I brought out was my Heaven and Earth design. This is called Peacock Days by Josephine Wall. The last time I had this out, I was finished. I finished the second row of pages. So about here, all the way over. Oops, I had this all folded and now I messed it up. Okay. It's not gonna work. Bear with me here. Where 
and okay, about there. Okay. So I started down here. I was going to work on two pages at a time, but the colors are very dense in the edges. So like all these dark colors, there's actually a lot of them on this page. So by the time I was finished using that color in that page, I, wa I wanted to change colors. So I probably will maybe work my way over to the second page if there's less of that color and I'm not tired of it. But if I am tired of that color and I'm ready for something else, then I'll just move my way over here. Because the way I work on it is I take a block at a time and I just keep using that the next color in that block and color completing the page, at least the page, before moving on to the next color until that block's done. And then I'll go to this block and do the same thing and same thing and the same thing. This color, this pattern is just so beautiful and colorful. I love the colors. It's got those pinks and oranges and then the the blues and the purples and there's going to be lots of greens there's a little bit of green coming in here but there'll be more greens as we go down into the peacock tail when I pulled it out I just thought oh it's just so pretty very drawn to the colors on this project as you can see at the bottom is a lot more green in the tail here and I'm getting into her face. Not as interesting down here. This is kind of like a little castle. You can't tell very well. Oh yeah, this blue part, kind of a castle. But the bottom's gonna be pretty boring, I guess. I mean, I'm sure there's gonna still be a million colors in there but there's you're not gonna really get much out of the stitching like it's just kind of background whereas this this is still something you're stitching the tail but it's a lot of the same whereas the top is very there's a lot of different things going on but it is kind of backgroundy like this is all background this is where i am right now is kind of just background <clears throat> Next project, let me see, I think it was my shadowing. Yeah. So I worked on this in January and then got to bring it out again. It's Herbularius, the Medieval Herb Garden Mandala. I liked the blue center which is kind of like a water pond. And then I like all the, I guess, garden mandalas. There's a fruit one, a flower one, the poison garden, all of those I was, I've was i drawn to. So this is up, okay. Last time I had a lot of the stitching done and was about to get into all the specialty stitches. So all this blue, it, oh, let me see. That's hard to tell. Okay. Yeah. So this blue that's right here, you can kind of see thicker lines of blue in that square patch, it goes all the way around. And then yeah, up in here, that is all specialty stitches. And then the inside of the blue is 
specialty stitches as well with a green, um, a darker green and a, the lighter green is a Gloriana, I believe. And then once I finished that, I went and I did all this beading that needed to be done. So there were a lot of beads. Each swirl right here, that and that all the way around are beads. And you can kind of see one of some beads shining and catching the light. And underneath that is a couple rows of another bead that's a little bit more matte and that's why it's not shining as much. Quite a bit of beading there and then all these gold beads all the way around I did as well. And then from there, it was time to do these little rays of green all the way around. So there's kind of bigger ones and then smaller ones. And where I'm working at this point is you can kind of see some squares underneath here and in here. And there's supposed to be one there and one there. That's where this bigger green specialty stitch goes. And then also there's a lot of this brown color that comes down into points. And then you kind of get a square. And that needs to go all the way around that those bigger green specialty stitches and the brown cross stitching. So that will take a good chunk of time. I believe Oh yeah, there's quite a bit more. Huh. There's just layer upon layer in this. Because at some point you get to this, you can see a lot of fabric for, through because I think it's kind of a half stitch in that area. But it's going to take a while before I get there. And then I worked on Book of Days by the Drawn Thread. Not to be confused with this Book of Days, which I'll show you March. Sort of used a lot of greens for March. This bird is kind of fun because I chose this bird because my mother-in-law got me a coloring book for Christmas because my daughter, my middle daughter, always asks me to color with her and color with her and color with her. And so she got me a coloring book that I can enjoy while I'm coloring with her. Um, and it's all birds. And it's got, it's an adult coloring book. It's pretty detailed and intricate. And it's really fun because the first few pages of the book kind of give you instructions on how to color well and use colored pencils nicely and blend and things like that. And then, so here's the page that you're coloring and then the back of that page is all about the bird you're coloring. And the, so I decided just to start with the first bird and it was actually a brown thrasher and I saw the sticker and I was like, oh my gosh, that looks just like a brown thrasher as far as um, the speckled tummy and the brown part of him. So that's why I put that bird in there. I have to do April next. This book of days I had a lot longer than I've ever used a book of days before. This is actually the first year that I'm using that. Uh, this has got the days of the week on it. So each little flower section has Monday. And then this little strip is for Tuesday. And over here is Wednesday and so on. So I worked on this. I didn't work on it as long as I would have liked to work on it because we ended up taking a trip over the winter break to Texas to visit my family. And 
there definitely just wasn't as much stitching time available. Um, I did get Monday all the way done and I did have to frog and keep restitching and frog and keep restitching. Another re hard part about getting tiny pockets of stitching time on vacation is it's harder to pay attention and get your counting right and all that. So this is part of the Tuesday strip here. And I'm actually getting to work on this next because I am slated to do a new start of this project, which is Erica Michaels, um, Lucky Berry. But at first glance of looking at this, I'm thinking, while I do love the four leaf clovers, I don't really know what this all means. And I'm not thrilled with like the colors that pop in. I'm sure there's like some really good meaning behind it, but I don't know what it is. And then you're supposed to stitch on this gauze, silk gauze. And there's a lot to that. So you're supposed to like get this gauze secured onto something. I forget now what. And then sew it on and once you finally got that all through you're supposed to stitch the whole pattern but then this whole part where you would think it's just plain old fabric is actually a dmc color that you stitch so it's a full coverage thing and i thought you know i'm not a hundred percent thrilled with the whole pattern and i don't like the idea of the gauze so i was like maybe i'll just do it on a plain old fabric instead of the silk gauze. But then I was like, I still don't really like the pattern that much. So I think I'm just not gonna stitch this. If anybody is interested in having this, let me know, I'd be happy to send it out. So that kind of gives me a free week. I got behind on my five day rotation. And so I am gonna go ahead and work on book of days and get that in. And then I was thinking about trying to FFO something or organize something. Um, I have a few things waiting to be, well, quite a few things waiting to be FFO'd. So I just need to find the time and the brain space to actually do that. It's a lot harder to take the limited time, free time that I have and try to FFO something rather than just easily pulling out a project I already have on the go and put some stitching in. So I have to be in the mood for FFOing and unfortunately that's rare. <laughs> the next project that I have is up on the rooftop. Um, I brought this with me and I stitched on it in the airplane both ways. We did drive down to Boston and fly, get a direct flight from Boston to Texas rather than flying out of Vermont, which means we'd have to have two flights with three kids. Plus it was a lot more expensive. So that's why we did that. And I basically stitched on the sky. I just went through and stitched as much blue as I possibly could because that would be easier stitching and still get some progress. Um, can't, I don't know if you can tell, but still, yeah, still kind of has that line of blue from this blue to that, which is kind of bugs me, but also I was stitching and 10 by 10 blocks and in person you can almost see where the 10 by 10 blocks are so that's why I kind of started trying to stitch diagonally to get rid of that the lines that are there I'm hoping what happens is once I wash it and iron it you know 20 years from now all that stuff will kind of puff up and go away but you never know so I'll try to prevent it as much as I can in the meantime. 
still quite a bit of sky to go. And then the last project, well, actually the last project I was working on was Celtic Winter, but I already showed that. Before that, I pulled out Noah's Ark by Teresa Wentzler, which is a kit. Last time I had, there's some, a few little bands in between the letters and the main picture. So I had the first row of letters and those three little bands done. So what I decided to do was make my way up to the main picture. So there's two colors so far. I think there's back stitching to go in as well. So there's a lighter gold and a darker gold. So it kind of like dark, up, dark, down, dark, up, dark, down. And then the opposite is this lighter gold, which is funny because when you look at it, it goes like line, 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 line. It makes kind of a chain. And I think a lot of um, Teresa Wentzler's borders are like that. This just happens to be a very small one comparatively. Um, many of her other borders are super big and a lot more detailed than this. But this is a small little scene. It's like my hand. Oh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to start... Um, oh, I want to finish the border as far as the stitching goes, but I wanted to get kind of the bottom of the scene going, get all the water as much as I can. Actually, what I did was there's two blocks. So I did all of one blue color in the two block area. There might be more. I don't know. I have some on my needle here. can't remember if I've done two colors at this point or one color of blue because there's 792 and 793 which are very similar so I might have done all of one color and started on the next possibly but I want to start doing the back stitching down here and just keep working my way up in the main picture and then I want to um once I do the main picture, I want to get into the little animals on the sides, which the little animals in each square are stitched one over one. Well, that's where you can get into some more detailed border. I think a lot of this is just plain stitching around the animals, but the corners are more detailed. Little flowers, I think. So there's still a lot of fun stuff to do in this project. Can't wait to do the rainbow. So that is it. Um, just plan to keep working through my book of days. Like I said, I have up on the rooftop scheduled more, not up on the rooftop, I'm sorry. Um, Book of Days scheduled. Esther's Waves and Celtic Winter gets to come out once again. And then in April, my Heaven and Earth Design, Chatelaine, up on the rooftop, Celtic Spring. Esther's Waves and Book of Days. So, yep. Just chugging away on, the, on my focus whips for the year, it looks like. Because I have a few that I would like to finish up this year. I did also stumble across, um, I think it was Fiberlicious Yummy, fi yummy Fabrics, something along those lines. I'll tell you for sure maybe in my next video because I did purchase two fabrics, um, very bright colored fabrics for my peacock and um, 
Elephant by Shannon, Shannon Christine. I wanted those to have a very vibrant, bright background. And I saw an Instagram post with a really bright fabric and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna look. And I did find a couple that I really liked. A lot of her fabrics are so beautiful. Like there's a sunset one where it's like navy blue. Well, not navy, but like a dark ocean blue because the sun's setting and then kind of a strip of land almost and then the bright orange sky. So pretty. And then like a tie-dye one and a lot of ombre ones that go from a lighter color down to a darker color. Very, very pretty. So I decided to sign up for the fabric of the month. There was no wait list or anything. And I thought I could do that for a while and if I really, really, really love every fabric that I'm getting every single month, I can stick to it for a bit. Or if it's kind of like a lot of out there fabrics that I'm not sure what I'm going to stitch on it, I might stop the subscription. <laughs> Just depends. We'll see how it goes. Because um, I know that I could be getting anything when it comes to what I saw to choose from. So I'm not sure how fast I'm going to get the... Uh, the fabrics that I asked for because I think she dies upon demand. Um, I might get the fabric of the month well before I actually get the fabrics that I know I'm going to use for the projects. Um, not that I'm trying to start them anytime soon anyway, so there's no, I don't feel a rush to have those in my possession. <sighs> yep. I hope everybody's enjoying their stitching and getting to see the change of season, season, whether that's you're getting warmer weather or you're gonna get some cooler weather. I'm sure either one might be welcome because you know we're at tail we're on the tail end of it, and it's always nice to get that that change uh, from outside. Take care, everybody, and happy stitching. Bye.